Hey, my name is John Broadwell, and I'm an embedded systems and medical device development consultant at my company, Broadwell Consulting Incorporated. Uh, if you need help with one of those things, give me a call. When I'm not busy working for clients, I enjoy uh, doing open source software and hardware and things like that, and uh, developing YouTube videos. And sometimes I create something that I think is useful enough that it should become a product so that other makers can have access to it. And this is one of those times. What we're looking at here on the screen is Serial Wombat PCB number 0027, which is two WS2811 ICs mounted on a breakout board. This board is currently available on Amazon in a three pack from Broadwell Consulting for $9.99. Here's a quick overview of what we'll go over in detail in this video. Each board has two WS2811C ICs. Each IC has a red, a green, and a blue channel that are each capable of carrying 30 milliamps of current. You can daisy chain multiple of these boards together for an almost unlimited number of outputs. Each driver is open collector. That means it's a low seg drive, not a push-pull high-low GPIO drive. You can use these with common anode RGB LEDs. That means that the high side of the, anode of the LED is all tied together, as opposed to common cathode LEDs, which won't work well with this board. This IC is an LED controller, not a PWM generator. So you can't expect necessarily to get perfect zero to 100% PWM output uh, if you're using it for something other than driving LEDs. A clever implementation, however, can drive other devices such as meters or relay boards. Uh, it's compatible with Serial Wombat 18AB's uh, WS2812 pin mode. It's also compatible with the Arduino Fast LED library. And you should note that the R and G channels are flipped on the WS2812 WS2811 what relative to the WS2812. So if you're using a WS2812 driver with this IC, you'll have to take that into account. Now, you may be familiar with the WS2811 in its most common form, which is as an LED driver. And it is somewhat similar to the more popular WS2812 uh, IC, which is integrated into an LED in NeoPixel and other similar uh, light strips. So, but the WS2811 came first, and it is a discrete IC that then interfaces to a discrete LED. The WS2811 IC is created by a company called World Semi that also creates the WS2812, and you can get the data sheet online. The WS2811 comes in a variety of different formats. The one we're gonna be using is the C format, which has current drive capability up to about 30 milliamps. The whole Serial Wombat line of products is designed around the idea of IO expansion, and so this little board is really a perfect fit into that. If we take a look at the back of the board, we see that it has ground, five volts, you can use 3.3, and data in, and it passes out that five volts ground and uh, data to another potentially daisy-chained WS2812 or 2811 or any of those kind of devices. This board is compatible with the Serial Wombat 18AB uh, WS2812 driver. You can see a video uh, link to that up above, which allows you to control these kind of ICs and LEDs from a Raspberry Pi or a PC or an Arduino or whatever without importing additional uh, libraries such as Fast LED, which means that you're not burning uh, CPU cycles generating the output that goes to these LEDs. That can be a problem sometimes when you also want to do other things such as software serial, servo driving, things like that. So let's take a quick look at the details of this board. There are two WS2811 ICs, each of which has a red, green, and blue output, plus a place to tap off of the five volt line. That's useful if you're gonna use this as an honest to goodness LED driver, either for an RGB LED, or because you wanna drive uh, up to six discrete LEDs off of this one board. Uh, some revs of this board have an additional five volt pad, on the other side, which makes both sides symmetrical. That's convenient, but not, uh, not required. The WS2811 takes in a pulse waveform on the DI pin and converts that to LED drive on these six outputs. Each of the outputs are what are called open collector outputs, which means when they are active, they tie to ground, 
When they're inactive, they become high impedance, essentially disconnected. It's important to understand that while we might want to use it like this, this chip is not necessarily exactly a PWM generation chip. Uh, it is an LED driver chip with uh, some of the oddballities of that that it includes, including this open collector driver uh, aspect. From my point of view, I see four potential applications where this board could be really, really useful. The first is the most obvious one, which is you want to drive a couple of RGB LEDs. And we'll look at that example in a minute. The second is that you want to use this one board to drive six discrete LEDs. You know, maybe you've got six LEDs on a panel or something like that. And so you could use this board for that. Uh, the third application is that you want to use it as a pseudo PWM driver. And so we'll take a look in a minute at using this board to drive three multimeters uh, that measure in milliamps. We'll see a case where we use three of these boards to connect up to 18 relays, which are on uh, relay boards with their own discrete uh, drive components. Because this board is intended for a wide variety of different applications, some of which may include headers, other of which may include directly connecting wires or LED leads to the board, uh, this board comes shipped with no headers installed. So, so whatever it is that you want to do with this board, you're going to have to solder into these pads. So let's take a look now at this board in its most obvious application, which is being used as a RGB LED driver for two separate RGB LEDs. We're going to use the Serial Wombat 18AB chip's capability to drive these kind of ICs. We can see here that we've got the board connected up to pin 19 and the 5 volt and ground on the Serial Wombat board. In this case, we're using one of the Serial Wombat boards that includes an onboard Xiao microcontroller as its driver. And so that Chow for right now, we're going to load the Serial Wombat bridge application. Uh, here's a link to a video that you can see up above on how to do that. Once the bridge application is lo loaded in the Chow, we can use the Serial Wombat panel application to control the Serial Wombat pin and therefore the WS2812 driver board. So we're going to connect up to the Serial Wombat chip. It's on COM9 in my case, using a SAMD21 version of the Xiao to run the bridge. We have that connection. And let's go ahead and right click on pin 19 because that's what we have hooked up to the board. We'll choose WS2812 as the pin mode. In this case, we have two LEDs because we have one board with two RGB LEDs connected. And we're going to hit the reverse red and green. An important thing to know about this board is that the RNG colors are swapped compared to the WS2812, which is the default state for the Serial Wombat and a lot of other uh, driver chips. So we're going to click that box and hit configure. Now we have two LEDs. We see we can tell it, I want you to be red. I want you to be green. I want you to be blue. And we get those outputs. And if we want to, we can drive both LEDs separately. So just real quick, we can see, yeah, definitely can, can drive RGB LEDs using an RGB LED WS2812 chip. That's not a big surprise to us. Let's look at some other more interesting applications because ultimately you could just buy RGB LEDs already attached to this or use the WS2812. Where this board really shines is where you start using it in ways that are a little bit different than the most common use case. Now we'll daisy chain another board that has six discrete red LEDs attached. Their anodes are attached to the plus five and the cathodes are attached to the RGB of each of the two separate ICs for a total of six outputs. So now that we've added another board, we're going to increase the number of LEDs from two to three. And remember when we talk about the number of LEDs, we're talking about RGB LEDs. So the first two LEDs in our sequence are these L RGB ones. The third LED is actually three discretes that are hooked up to the R, the G, and the B channel. So let's take a look at how that works. If we click red, we get one LED. If we click green, we get a different LED. If we click blue, 
we get a different LED. If we do a combination, for example, yellow is red and green, we get two LEDs. Magenta is blue and red. So we get those two LEDs. If we choose white, we get all three LEDs. And of course, because they're on this daisy chain, we still have the ability to control the first two LEDs in the sequence. Now let's look at the next application that we are gonna use this as a PWM driver. Here we've daisy changed another WS2811. And in this case, we've attached it to three different multimeters on the R, G, and B channels. Uh, in each case, the positive on the meter goes to the five volt output of the WS2811 board. And each of the negatives on the meters goes to the R, G, and B channels because they are low side, not high side drive. If we remember on the previous LED, we left one set of three uh, empty, so we're going to have a blank in here. Then we're going to use the next set of three drivers to control three separate ammeters. So now we're talking about five total LEDs. So let's take the final LED driver, which is attached to those, and let's set red to 20. This is out of 255. We want to be careful that we don't bang the ammeter over against the edge. And we can see as we change these values, we get amperage drive. And it's not perfectly linear. You know, this is something where you might have to experiment with it, but we can see as we go towards 100, uh, we, actually we buried the needle, so probably don't want to go up quite that high. So it looks like for these particular meters, maybe a setting of about 90 is full range. Maybe even a little less than that. Let's try 80. Seventy-five. That's not bad. So somewhere between 75 and 80. So then if we go and suppose we want to set our green, the second one, to mid-range. So let's try half of that. We'll say 38. Uh, looks like maybe a little higher we need to go. And again, this chip is an LED driver, not a PWM generator. So we don't necessarily expect it to be a perfect PWM driver. If it's doing current control or some other stuff that, you know, we don't necessarily know all the stuff that it's doing internally, uh, other interesting things might be happening. But we see we can definitely uh, go ahead and add on to that guy and control these current outputs to control a, uh, set of ammeters, which again might be useful for a front panel application. I don't know if you can hear this on the video, but there is a consistent two kilohertz whine that is in line with the two kilohertz PWM that comes out of this chip. So keep that in mind if you're doing something along these lines. And again, as before, we can control the other LEDs that are connected up to the string because they are WS2011 string together LEDs. In our next video, we'll show how to use six of these boards to control 18 relays and how to use the Arduino fast LED library with this board or how to use the Serial Wombat 18AB driver through Arduino. Uh, so subscribe if you want to see that video and maybe pop over to Amazon, pick up a pack of these things to play with. I think you'll find them really useful. So until we talk again, have fun and keep making stuff. The Serial Wombat firmware is available on GitHub and is constantly being updated. Subscribe below so that you can see the latest features and videos that come out as we fix bugs and add new features 